People, people don't, don't abandon, abandon people, people they, they love. love. People, people abandon, abandon people, people they, were they were using. Food for Soul and Goa co-working present today's readings and reflection. September 4th, 2022. 23rd Sunday in Ordinary Time. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Who can know God's counsel? Or who can conceive what the Lord intends? For the deliberations of mortals are timid, and unsure are our plans. For the corruptible body burdens the soul, and the earthen shelter weighs down the mind that has many concerns. And scarce do we guess the things on earth, and what is within our grasp we find with difficulty. But when things are in heaven, who can search them out? Or who ever knew your counsel, except you had given wisdom and sent your Holy Spirit from on high? And thus were the paths of those on earth made straight. The Word of the Lord. from the letter of St. Paul to Philemon. I, Paul, an old man, and now also a prisoner for Christ Jesus, 
urge you on behalf of my child Onesimus, whose father I have become in my imprisonment. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I should have liked to retain him for myself, so that he might serve me on your behalf in my imprisonment for the gospel. But I did not want to do anything without your consent, so that the good you do might not be forced, but voluntary. Perhaps this is why he was away from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a brother, beloved especially to me, but even more so to you, as a man and in the Lord. So if you regard me as a partner, welcome him as you would me. The Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. Let your face shine upon your servant, and teach me your laws. Alleluia, Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Great crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and addressed them. If anyone comes to me, without hating his father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, and even his own life. He cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry his own cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. Which of you wishing to construct a tower does not first sit down and calculate the cost to see if there is enough for its completion? Otherwise, after laying the foundation and founding himself unable to finish the work, the onlookers should laugh at him and say, This one began to build, but did not have the resources to finish. Or what king marching into battle would not first sit down and decide whether with 10,000 troops he can successfully oppose another king advancing upon him with 20,000 troops? But if not, while he is still far away, he will send a delegation to ask for peace terms. In the same way, any one of you who does not renounce all his possessions cannot be my disciple. The Gospel of the Lord. Reflection on Today's Readings by Bob Being a disciple of the Lord Jesus takes a conscientious decision on our part. Yet even the ability to make that decision is a gift from God. The passage from wisdom extols the virtues of seeking to share in God's wisdom and lifting oneself beyond the merely human level of action. The responsorial psalm describes the frailty of human existence when compared to the divine existence of God. In writing a letter to Philemon, today's second reading, St. Paul lifts the relationship of slave and master to that of brothers in the Lord Jesus. In the Gospel, Jesus warns his disciples that being one of his followers is a very demanding undertaking, which takes complete dedication of mind, soul, and body. Today's selection from the Book of Wisdom compares human wisdom to divine wisdom and remarks that there is no basis of comparison since God's wisdom is in another dimension compared to human thought. Yet, God is willing to pour out the Holy Spirit upon mortals so that they can be lifted to a level where they can share in God's wisdom. When guided by God's Spirit, one can begin to consciously choose to align oneself with God's plan and God's will. The responsorial continues the contrast between human existence and divine existence. Our earthly life is only a very tiny section in the continuum which marks God's being. Yet, if we seek to be filled with God's wisdom, we can share in the work of God and God will bless the works of our hands and we can then give glory back to the Lord, as St. Paul is confined by his imprisonment. He writes a letter to Philemon, a believer with whom he has had contact. Paul has been blessed to have one Zymus as a companion during his confinement. 
One Zymus, the name means useful or beneficial, had run away from Colossae where he had been a slave of Philemon. After converting one Zymus to the faith, Paul is now sending him back to his master, Philemon. Paul asks Philemon to look not at one Zymus as a useless slave but a useful brother in the Lord Jesus. Thus Paul is challenging Philemon to rise to a higher level and treat his slave in a way which shows their common bond in the Lord Jesus, a bond marked by love and compassion. In the Gospel, Jesus addresses these words to those who would be his disciples. Following the Lord Jesus takes more than merely listening to what Jesus says. It means a whole change of mind, heart, and soul. It demands renunciation of self, old ties, and a complete commitment, mentally, physically, and spiritually, to being like the Master Teacher. A very important aspect of this commitment is the mental resolve to act in a manner which reflects one's relationship with the Lord Jesus. I am struck with exhortations of today's readings. Being a disciple of Jesus is a call to rise above our normal human way of acting and to act in a supernatural way. Supernatural for me means what the etymology of the word implies, above the natural. It does not mean purely spiritual, but implies a going beyond the normal, or being lifted to a higher plane of action. We cannot rise to this higher level of acting by our own doing. We can only do this with God's help, focusing on the life and ministry of our Master Teacher, and with the guidance and empowerment of the Holy Spirit, an example of one acting on this higher level is what Paul asks of Philemon. Philemon has every right to not only have his slave, one Zymus, back, but to harshly punish him for his running away. Paul is asking Philemon not to continue the acceptable practice of his time of dominating his slave, but to treat the once useless slave as a useful brother and co-worker in the Lord Jesus and in proclaiming the good news. For Philemon to do as Paul suggests will take an extraordinary amount of strength and commitment, and the help of God. In a similar manner, Jesus is asking his disciples, including us living today, to rise above our normal way of relating to family, possessions, and living in general. We are to place our relationship with the Lord Jesus as the primary relationship in our lives. We must be completely dedicated to the mission of Jesus. In part of a retreat which I have presented to groups before, I reflected on the Markan parallel of today's Gospel. Two key words to Mark's passage, Mark 8 verses 34 to 35, are, Aparniamai, rejection of self, and, homologio, belonging to the master and his cause. Literally, same thought. As I view this aspect of discipleship, I am reminded of the relationship that existed between apprentices and master craftsperson in ages past. When a young person wanted to learn a trade, he would go to a master craftsperson. The artisan would not just teach the would-be artist by giving him books or lecturing the youthful learner. The disciple of the master would live with the artist, day in and day out. The apprentice would learn not just the how-to aspect of the craft, but take on the whole attitude and personality of the master. The individuality of the disciple would dissolve as the learner would take on the whole attitude and activity of the master. The understudy would have to put his whole mind, soul, strength, and actions into become like his master teacher. After years of working under the master, when the young apprentice finally graduated, he would present his work to the public. The highest compliment that would be paid to the new artist would be for someone to say, I don't know who you are, 
but I know who your master is because your work is perfectly patterned on your master. What we need to do as disciples, disciplined learners, is to let go of our own prejudices, making judgments ahead of time, and selfish ways and imitate our master teacher. We must apply ourselves fully to the work of the master, consciously giving our all. Calling upon the guidance of the Holy Spirit, we must renounce anything, which prevents us from fully following the Master. And hopefully, someday, someone will say to us, I am not too sure of who you are, but I know who is, your Master Teacher, for your work is a reflection of Jesus. The Personal Question or Action for Today In what ways do I reflect what is the most important aspects of my life? Have I striven to rise to the supernatural level of acting beyond the merely human way of acting? In what aspects of my life do I still need to let go of my selfish ways? Can people see who is my master by my actions? Let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord God, creator and giver of all that is good. Through your goodness, you have given us the perfect example of how to live out our human life in a supernatural way. You have allowed your Son, Jesus, to share in our humanity in order to be the Master Teacher. He continues to invite us to be his disciples, his apprentices, and to continue doing his work. Through the continued outpouring of your Holy Spirit, Raise us up beyond our merely human way of acting, so that we can be reflections of the Master Teacher. Give us the strength, wisdom, and guidance so we can renounce all that is hindering us from being disciples of your Son. We make this prayer in His name, Jesus, for He is our Lord, our Brother, and He has given us the perfect example of loving service through His life, ministry, death, and resurrection. And He is living and reigning with you and the Holy Spirit, our one and only God, forever and ever. Amen. Presented by Father Frankie Fernandez OFM Capuchin Justice Peace Integrity Creation JPIC Capuchin Goa